Hello everyone, in this episode of From Start to Part, I wanted to cover the making of the frame or the body for my three pound combat robot, Lolo Man. This is gonna be a little bit different than most of my From Start to Part videos. I'm not gonna go through every single step along the way. One, because I actually didn't film the majority of making this part, but two, I kind of wanted to cover this because this was one of the first projects that I ever did on my Avid CNC router. So I kind of wanted to talk about, you know, the pros and cons of using a router and um, some of the things I ran into, some of the things that I would do differently. So um, yeah, it was a good exercise to see what the machine could do, what it couldn't do, and how to use it properly. So let's start out first by taking a closer look at these two parts. The body or the frame of Lolo Man is made up of two pieces. You basically have this cover or this top, um, which actually goes on the underneath side of the bot. Um, this is the up of the bot. So just kind of this cover plate that sits on the bottom. And then you have the main frame or body. Now this frame is the most complicated piece, of course, and this was machined from a solid block of aluminum. I'll get to that later. Um, so there was some challenges just with the sheer amount of material removal on this, but generally speaking, this was pretty straightforward just with a couple little gotchas. The cover, on the other hand, proved to actually be a little bit more challenging. If you've ever done machining on very thin parts, it can be really tricky, especially with the work holding. Uh, this is, um, both of these are 6061 aluminum, and this part is only two millimeters thick, so it's um, pretty thin. And when you start getting down to the machining and the facing like this, um, the part is very difficult to just hold down. Um, so yeah, let me um, talk about some of the work holding. So let's start with the cover plate. This cover plate, two millimeters thick, um, I don't know, like eight by nine inches, somewhere around there. I started with a piece of eighth inch stock that I already had in my scrap bin. And what I did to start out is I used some um, carpet tape just to tape this down to a piece of MDF that I had bolted to the spoil board on the CNC router. From there, I could just drill these six holes and then that would drill straight through, and then I could actually fasten this down into the MDF. So by drilling these holes, it gave me an anchor point, so now I could screw it down into the bed. I thought everything would be smooth sailing from here because really this is just a lot of um, you know really easy contours and then the outside contour. I thought this would be a really easy part, but it turns out I didn't measure my stock offset properly. So the stock that I had was actually a lot larger than what the machine was seeing and it just tried plowing right through the material. And this caused um, two issues. One, it trashed my end mill, um, but two, in the whole process, I didn't lose any steps on the machine the machine kept plowing right through, but when I hit the emergency stop on the machine, I lost my position. So you can see later on, when I went to machine the pockets for the magnets, they were offset. They should be horizontally in line with the screw holes, but they were offset. So I actually had to completely trash this part and start over from scratch. For the second iteration of this part, which is this one right here, everything went fine, I guess. Um, the biggest issue that I had was when I was doing the facing to bring this down to the proper thickness that it needed to be. I was using a quarter inch end mill, which just really was the only end mill I had for this machine. And it just took a zillion passes. You can see just all the tool marks on here. It took a really long time. And the problem with that is you're not cutting much material, you're moving pretty fast, but you generate a lot of heat, which the tape doesn't like. And of course I had to get rid of the screws because I was gonna be facing over top of those. So it was kind of a tricky thing to be able to hold this down with just the tape, which starts to release and move around when it gets warm. So this is definitely a case where some kind of um, lubricant or cooling would have helped out, but the whole underneath side of this was MDF, which would have swelled up. So I didn't want to do that. So a little bit of learning there. I definitely need to do something for facing other than the quarter inch. I'm looking at getting a much larger bit that I can use to face this down. But generally speaking, this turned out okay. It's just, it's a very thin um, piece to work with. So that was a bit challenging. 
The setup for the body was pretty much the same, but I didn't have any through holes like I did with the cover plate, so I applied the tape onto the bottom of it, put it down onto the table, and then once the outside contour was done, then I used these little 3D printed um, toe clamps to hold it down on the outside. They're just a little um, 3D printed Nylon X clamp, I guess, has a little bit of a lip on it, and that lip is actually contoured down so that when you clamp it, it actually kind of pulls in a little bit. And I had, um, I think, what, six of these, six or eight of these along the edge, and that was to keep it from shifting around like this and holding it down to the table when I did all of the inside pocketing. This part started out as this big piece of billet. This is the um, second piece that I had. And the good news was this was already faced down. So this is what the other side looked like. Hello. Um, this is really reflective, so I'm not gonna show that side. Um, but yeah, it started out as this piece, did the outside contour, then clamped it down, and then it was really easy to get into the inside pieces. Um, so yeah, let me do this. Let me show you what the cam looks like on this, just to show you the sheer amount of tool paths that went into this. It's an easy part, but with the Avid CNC router, I really kind of wasn't sure how much material I could remove. I really wasn't that confident about the work holding, you know, clamping directly to an MDF bed with some tape. So um, yeah, there's a lot of really small cuts and a lot of multiple depths. So let's go look at the cam for this. So here is the part in SolidWorks. I'll just kind of give a brief rundown of the setup. As you can see, here is the stock. It's a little bit oversized. And the first things I did was, you know, the contour, which we talked about earlier. I did three step downs. I really should have probably only done two, maybe even one then went through and did the outside contour. At this point, after these two steps were done, that's when it was held down, and I started moving in on the inside. Now you can see that it's not cutting the wheel cutouts. Typically what I do, because I'm really not that good at cam um, yet, is I typically hide these wheel holes because I don't really know how to use the stock contours to make it kind of ignore those. So it's kind of um, avoiding those sections, but it normally would just cut right through those. Um, I would normally just hide this and then rerun the cam like that. Um, after that, just kind of a contour to clean up all these outside edges after the adaptive, a um, little bit more cleanup. This was just kind of to adjust the size based on the 3D prints that I had. Um, more cleanup on the outside, and then clean up on these holes, which I completely forgot about. And then we move on to an adaptive on this little lip where the cover sits. Um, so just kind of clean that up, contour around there to clean up the edge, and then faced off the top of the posts to make sure that they were at the right height. And then doing the wheel cutouts, contour on the wheel cutouts, a facing over the whole top of the lip just to make sure it was down at the right height and then drilling out the holes. Now you notice I have 10 holes here, but I only use six. I just decided to drill all of these out. I might end up using all of these in the future, who knows? And then finally, this was just a kind of clean up on the wheels. I found that the wheels were just a little too tight, so I just opened them up a little bit more. Now I'll talk about this front lip later. This was done in a separate operation, but that's pretty much all there was to it. And if I select all of this and go to simulate, you can see that it's an hour and 36 minutes. Now that takes a long time. The majority of it is this, this internal right there. As you can see down here on the timeline, that was the vast majority of it. And that was, what, 44 minutes. I did run most of this at 150% or sometimes even 200% speed. So it really only took eh, maybe an under an hour total. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea of what this looks like, uh, we can run the whole thing. Now, of course, this is not real time, but this just gives you an idea of just how much the end mill was moving around. So that's still the outside contour. So we got that done. Now we're starting moving on to the inside. And I didn't set the depth right on this simulation. It should be going all the way down. Um, but once we get through all of that, then it's just all the little cleanup stuff. And there's just, there's a lot of tool paths here. 
And there you go. So there is the finished part. So hopefully that gives you a little bit better idea of the cam behind this part. The last thing I wanted to talk about with the chassis is this um, front edge, um, which is where everything attaches to. Uh, I have these five holes drilled across it, and there's like a little bit of a um, kind of dovetail lip machined on here. Uh, this was pretty easy. I just used the Tormach. I actually used the outside jaws of my vise just to kind of hold this in place and then just indicate it and then just ran and then mill across it. You know, nice and simple. There's really nothing too complicated about this. I didn't do this on the Avid only for the reason of work holding. Once this was off of the table, flipping it was a bit of a challenge. And since I don't really have a vise or anything like that, it just made more sense to put this into a vise so that I could get this all lined up nice and straight. For the holes in the front, this was um, kind of just one of those little clever things. 3D printing is a fantastic thing to have in your arsenal. I just 3D printed this little cover, which sits right on the front, kind of snaps in place. So once that snapped in place, it has the five holes, and then I just used my drill press to just drill straight through. You could just do this with a hand drill as well. Realistically, the hole size isn't overly critical, and it doesn't go that far deep into the chassis. It's just a matter of lining them up or spacing them equally. So just a little 3D printed drill guide served that purpose just fine. So I think that's about all I have to say for the chassis for Lolo Man. This was probably one of my favorite builds that I've ever done. It's seemingly very simple, but there's a lot of little complicated details to it. But, you know, it came out pretty nice and I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, if anyone wants to kind of know anything more, please post a comment down below in the comments if you have any questions about something I didn't cover. Um, but as always, you know, check me out on my Facebook page down below. Uh, if you want to help out my channel, you can see the Amazon link down below as well. And thanks for watching and see you in the next video.